Okay, let's hope they show us Toya's new house this episode. Because you know she moved. So we gonna start with Quad and Phaedra, honey. Hide your social security cards and your VIN numbers. Oh, Quad got a man. But can she get a plot line on this show is the real question. Girl, Phaedra did hire some trade as a butler. I know Atlanta trade when I see it. And he give me $200 an hour. I love how Quad said, oh, Toya hates me so much. And then we just cut to all the times when Quad has attacked Toya. Toy ain't done nothing but move every season. She ain't got time to worry about you or your sorry little unions. But then we get to the real about her DUI, and she was cited, but because she refused her field test and had a decent lawyer, she had all charges dropped. I just don't drink and drive. That's why I haven't driven in 15 years. I'm the designated drinker. Oh, God, so now we got Goldie from Flavor of Love, I mean Sweet Tea, in Quad's old house, and this really shows you how tacky Stuart Lil is. You still in the same house, you just moved a new heifer in here. On the same show, and you're gonna get left the same way. I hope you keep that tempur this time. But now we gotta hear these two argue about this wedding that they're doing for the show. But now y'all already arguing about wedding planning, and God, Stuart Little aged. These 10 years have been rough on Dr. G. Watching Stuart Little make the same mistakes that he made with Quad is really going to be exhausting all season, isn't it? I mean, you should know to be more involved from your first marriage, but you ain't learned shit. Over in Dr. Jackie's stirrups, we got the brat. <laughs> so we're having a tender moment watching the brat's baby in the sonogram here in the first heartbeat. And then she start beatboxing with him. You're going to be a cool mom to brat. <laughs> oh, Toya got a wine club. I could definitely see her working that. But I stand strong with my shade from BravoCon that, that she should go into real estate because she has so much experience buying and selling homes in the greater Atlanta market. But now they're teaching their kids about the birds and the bees and the burns. Like chlamydia. Yeah, teach them kids about condoms early. Early. But after that, we gonna go wedding dress shopping with sweet tea. And of course, Toya and Phaedra show up, but Phaedra's just here to get the credit card numbers. So she's in a Facebook group for those who want a little coot in their cooch. However, Phaedra and Toya don't want the coot cock. But over with Toya and Eugene, Toya got a new dress. But where's your furniture? Y'all standing in front of the mirror, ain't a chair in there. No art on the wall. No plants. But Toya having her wine party and know the heifers is gonna be shady. So it's Toya's wine event, but all the talk is on Sweet Tea and her coot group. So Sweet Tea is getting sick of them bringing up Quad every 15 minutes. Well, they need to go on and have the heifer around and just let it be Alky Boo. Aha! So she go in the bathroom and cry at Simone Comforter, and she upset that Greg ain't trying to plan the wedding, and Simone had a good point. If you want to marry somebody involved in wedding planning, marry a woman. So we gonna play a game with the wine called Box Wine Bitch. And so we gonna compare and contrast the high end versus Costco and and see who has an expensive palate. So the first one, which wasn't good, was the box wine, but her wines people actually enjoy. Heavily gone crow, she proud of Toya. Well, you always go in on her lack of good ear, just because you like to install chicklets. But after the little wine tasting, Phaedra gonna sit with Greg and ask him why he wants to marry this floozy. Why is a thief interested in what a gold digger's doing is what I wanna know. So Phaedra giving him some advice on getting his nup together. I don't think he got that much to take, according to Quad. I mean, he ain't even moved to a bigger house. Quad, are you trying to pull a Porsche and get yourself a Simon? Is that why you spending all this time in the motherland? I mean, you look great over there, I have to say. But you could stay in America and find an Esther roll. Now, Quad. How are you shocked that Heavenly is bad-mouthing you when that's what she does every season? Y'all are Ace Boone, then you fall out. Ace Boone, fall out. That, that's all you do. It's like Necky Christie. Quad's, of course, upset that Hefferly ain't called and checked on her. But Quad thinks that everybody's life revolves around her. Hefferly got kids and a whole husband to take care of. But over with Greg and Sweet Tea, I'ma need Lady Isha. I'ma need her to get some better outfits, some more flattering cuts. Cause her and them biker shorts, mm-mm, honey. It was given Busted Biscuit. 
So we open with Evelyn and Brittany Rainier. I think this is one of future baby mamas. They walking around the park talking about the dinner. So now we talking about Shaq reaching out to Brittany versus Brittany reaching out to Shaq. Shawnee's married to somebody else. Why does it matter? Why are we always trying to tiptoe around fecal nostrils feelings? Heffa ain't even with them no more. Brittany's upset she's got to be a weekend mom because in her state she just can't take her child and run. Over with Nessa and her bang. She calls Amy about the dinner with Fecal Nostril and talks about how nobody had her back. So we talking to Amy, that the heifer who has a kid with Evelyn's baby daddy, Carl Crawford. There's enough child support to go around for all of you. I don't know why you're whining. So Amy tells her, cool your heels. We find now that crap was 10 years ago. I let him cheat in peace now. So Vanessa wants to put a pin in it. Oh God, Jen and Jackie are getting back together for what? Y'all don't have a bond. Nikki Christie gonna say, I miss the bond me and Jennifer have. All you do is get on that poor girl nerve while your husband runs and hides from you. Oh Lord, now Jen going on about her scammer. Now we got Jackie on the phone with Doug and child Doug living the phone like Jamal. Meanwhile, across town, we've got Brittany and Jaseel meeting up for a red hair convention. Coolie red, honey, Coolie red. Oh, and Vanessa and Clayana show up. They're going to try to get everybody on the good foot yet again. I don't know why. Y'all are some hateful harpies. So now Nessa's tired of talking about this issue with Evelyn. Girl, that was your plot line for the first two episodes. You came in rah-rah. Hell, even Jaseel telling you, honey, if it was from 10 years ago, let it go. So we come back from commercial break in Britney's shop for baby PJ, but ain't with baby PJ. Weekend ma. So now Nessa and Heffelin gonna have a one-on-one. -on -one. I was very triggered, Evelyn, and I was around when she was really hurting. Well, Carl was the one that was hurting her. Where's the energy for him? Run up on his hussies. So she talk about how this heifer tried to ruin her life and caused her to miscarry, and Evelyn understands, so they get on the good foot. But in Evelyn's like, well, according to Carl, that relationship was over. Honey, that's every relationship you're in. There's always another woman in the wings. But according to the man, the relationship was over. How long are we supposed to believe you're buying that lie? Meanwhile, across town, Brooke and Jen are going shopping. Oh, and Nikki Christie shows up too because now Jackie and Jennifer are in a good place. How can you be in a good place with a soiled soul? But now we at the little ice skating event. This episode ain't giving nothing. Now, Nessa with the bang says there wasn't a lot of ice skating in the desert, which I find interesting because I lived in North Carolina and in high school, we'd go ice skating to cool off in the summer. We went to the ice house and there was another one, but I learned how to ice skate in high school because in the Carolinas, it was so freaking hot. So I'm surprised they don't have an ice skating rink in Phoenix. So I'm surprised they don't have an ice skating rink in Phoenix. That would be a great way to cool off. So we got Nikki Christie showing up, Jaseel showing up, everybody having fun. Where's the argument? I didn't tune in to see these heifers pretend to get along. So Brooke says, I'm going to sit this one out because bitches be on thin ice. Who's on thin ice? Heifer Christie? No, you just repaired things with her. Vanessa with the bang. So after ice skating, Nessa tell everybody that her and Heffelin are good. So then Brooke and Nessa with the bang get on the good foot. Nessa says, well, you know, people talking about my marriage triggers me. And Brooke said, yeah, and I might have made fun of your sorry little union, but you know, things can get heated. And it is a sorry little union if you got to be running tape every 15 minutes to see he ain't cheating. Because he is cheating. But now Clayana don't want to open up and tell this group her business, and I can understand why. Y'all are hateful harpies. But child, now then Brooke getting up, then Britton getting up, then Brittany getting up, we taking coats off, I can stand up, I don't care what you can do. Brawl, 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 skirmish. This is why we tune in. But I can also understand the girls wanting to know a little bit more about this heifer who hanging out with them, or at least know who she's sleezing around with. Because common tramp tend to have the same Johns. I mean, every one of them been through Shaq. Then Brittany like, well, she can stand on her own name, on her own tin. But you're on a show called Basketball Wives. So clearly the only reason you're on this show is not because of your 10, but because of your man's 20. So then Brooke yells at Brittany for getting up saying she's out of pocket. But Brooke, when have you ever been in pocket? When? You couldn't stay in a zippered pocket, heifer. All right, Brittany threw a drink on Brooke. Girl, you gonna pay for that? 
And that was the shit, and I mean shit, so let's get to Basketball Wives Borlando.